first place goes to Pasta Dish number five. Yeah! yeah. Hey junkies, hope all is well and you're keeping safe as we emerge from this quarantine. We're going to start to prepare our Sicilian turkey bean stew. Uh, it's going to be very similar to the very first video we did of the uh, Sicilian bean stew, except uh, we're going to add a protein here and use some nice lean turkey, uh, the dark meat. Uh, when it comes to turkey, I love all of it, uh, especially the dark meat. I'm definitely a dark meat type of guy. Uh, personal preference, I'm sure you could find uh, different advantages of eating dark meat in terms of nutrients and such. I'll let you guys Google that and do that on your own time. But we're going to get these turkey drumsticks seasoned up with our smoky Sicilian seasoning that you'll all know and love. And also, we have washed our beans. We're going to use a pinto bean uh, to your left and a black bean to the right. So these need to be hydrated. Of course, before you hydrate your your dry bulk goods, you want to make sure you uh, rinse them. So they've been rinsed. We just need to add water, season these guys up, and then we'll get them in the fridge to uh, marinate for about 24 hours. All right, we got our turkey legs all seasoned up with our Sicilian spice rub. It's that beautiful shade of red, almost like a burgundy from all those smoky spices, the paprika, the smoked paprika, the chili powder. We got a little bit of a curry powder as well. So the yellow turmeric definitely contributes to this hue of red. And of course we have our uh, pinto beans and our black beans hydrating. So we're going to get all this in the fridge and then we're going to get chopping tomorrow morning and start our Sicilian turkey bean stew. See you then junkies. It is game day. We have taken out our seasoned turkey drumsticks and allowed them to come to room temp. Uh, we've spoken about that before most certainly in prior videos uh, that anytime you're gonna uh, cook meat a protein anything with a face you want to make sure it comes uh, to room temp uh, it just makes for more even cooking so we're gonna put our turkey drumsticks in our pot we're gonna cook those off and then we're gonna pull them out and um, we're going to throw in our vegetables. Now, in terms of the vegetables, again, none of this is really set in stone. You junkies see that I don't necessarily include recipes. Um, we're not baking here. If we were baking, then, yeah, every little ingredient and the amount thereof uh, is super important. You know, baking is not unlike chemistry. Uh, but here we're cooking. And there's really no right or wrong here. Uh, you got to go with your gut. You'll know what goes together, you know what won't go together, and if you make a mistake, so be it. So the vegetables we're going to be using are a normal gang medley. Uh, onions, peppers, carrots, celery, um, tomato, sweet potato. We'll have a, a summer squash, which uh, I think is a zucchini. i got to look in the fridge, but that's what this is all about. You know, look in the fridge... Look in your pantry, look on your uh, on your uh, your counter, and see uh, and see what you feel like chopping up. So, once again, these are at room temp. Let's start cooking them off and chopping up our vegetables. Let's start frying these legs up.
These guys are getting such a beautiful color. And this is super important, right? We're gonna take them out pretty soon. The point isn't to fully cook them right now, but this is gonna become the base of our Sicilian turkey leg stew. Again, that's all flavor that you're looking at, especially those little burnt bits on the bottom, which will eventually deglaze uh, with some red wine. But again, it's super important to make sure that oil is as seasoned as possible. And then we're about to chop some garlic and throw that in once we take the turkey legs out and the oil cools down. Because again, you really don't want to ever burn garlic. Nobody likes that bitter flavor. So let's get this garlic chopped up and take out our turkey legs. We have minced our garlic into a paste. I just wanted to hop in here. It may look really cool and sound super sophisticated, but it's really not. All you're gonna do is, you know, obviously use a super sharp knife. I always rock with that Bokashi steel, as you can see. Um, but you're gonna chop your garlic and you're just gonna add salt to it. You're gonna add a little bit of salt. And along with the chopping motion, that salt is also gonna aid in making sure your garlic um, is minced into a paste. So all those little salt uh, granules are like little knives or broken glass. Um, so that has an effect on the garlic while you chop it, which results into a paste. So there you go. So time to lay out the other vegetables we're gonna use as always, and then we'll uh, chop that up and get that into our pot. We took out our turkey legs and we just have that oil cooling down with all those delicious bits on the bottom uh, before we actually add the garlic because we don't want it to burn. These are the vegetables we are going to use for our Sicilian turkey leg stew. So again, nothing special here. This is what I typically have laying around anyway. Um, we have our sweet potatoes, summer squash, zucchini, you could use yellow, you could use anything really, it's just what I'm using. Um, jalapenos as always, you gotta have some sort of bite, spice to it. Cherry tomatoes, it's what I have, so I'm gonna use it. Um, if I didn't have tomatoes, I'd probably just buy <clears throat> a vine ripen or, or a beefsteak tomato. Um, it's going to be a pain in the ass to cut up, but, you know, whatever. It's, again, it's what I have, what you have. It's all about the frugal lifestyle, right? Celery, carrot, <clears throat> red onion, and uh, in that bag is cabbage. Let's get these chopped up and thrown in the pot. We're about to add our garlic to the oil to further seasoning it, uh, to further season it and fortify that base that we've taken time to create and uh, our legumes or our beans if you recall we do have the pinto beans and the black beans hydrating in the fridge so those are still in there uh, and we'll take those out shortly drain them and eventually add them our veg is all chopped up there's our legumes our beans the pinto and the black beans so we're gonna get this in the pot and continue on with our stew. Everybody in the pool, and we're gonna hit it with our handy dandy Sicilian seasoning. We spoke about this in the past, uh, including in the beginning of this video, but all those smoky spices, um, very, very much paprika uh, based both regular paprika and smoked paprika so that's where you get that nice uh, red color from so we're going to continue to sweat these down as you can see we didn't go too crazy chopping up the vegetables again this is a stew unless you're OCD there's no right or wrong way to do this so don't go crazy chopping up the vegetables into super small pieces or you know, a particular thinness. It's just not necessary. Uh, and in case you were wondering, 
all those cherry tomatoes were a pain in the ass to chop up. <laughs> so, hang tight. That sound you junkies are hearing is all the moisture sweating out of our vegetables. We're going to continue to saute this up. Then we're going to add our beans. And then we're going to deglaze the entire pot with our red wine. And last but not least, put our turkey drumsticks back in, add some H2O, and we'll let thermodynamics do the rest of the work for us. In other words, set it and forget it. All right, in goes our beans. Do this carefully. Don't want this to turn into a shit show. There we go. Beautiful. Only have one jumper. We'll take it and put it back in. So let's get this incorporated a little bit and then we'll hit it with some wine to deglaze everything. Then our turkey. Then we'll set it and forget it. It is one o'clock somewhere. So time for a wine. Yeah, it should be good. And we'll stir that in and make sure everybody is happy. It is turkey o'clock somewhere as well. So time for the turkey. Let's get these bad boys in there. Get all of that flavor. Nothing quite like the drippings. So let's mix this up a little bit and uh, we'll get our water ready uh, to add. Perhaps this is just my OCD, but no good flavor shall ever go to waste. So I actually like rinsing my plate. Um, rinsing my plate and using that um, liquid for the water that I'm going to add to the Sicilian turkey leg bean stew. So, there we go. Let's bring this over. And add it. We need some more. Now you're probably asking yourself, all right, cool. Um, I get it, you know, water. But how much water should I add? Obviously, you don't want this to overflow and mess up the stove, you know, because we are going to bring this to a boil and then reduce it down to a simmer. And this is going to, of course, sit all day uh, and cook away. And all that flavor uh, from the turkey legs is just going to continue to permeate throughout the stew. And all that meat also is just going to fall off the bone. So. I guess this is about a half an inch from the top. So that, that should definitely do it. That should be more than enough. Uh, you shouldn't worry about this becoming too watery um, between the beans, especially the pinto beans uh, and the cabbage that we chopped up. It's gonna most definitely thicken, uh, thicken up. So, you know, don't, don't worry about the consistency if it's, you know, too, uh, if it's too loose and watery. Uh, plus, as it cooks down, it's going to lose water, so it's all good. So let's bring this up to a boil, then let that boil away for a couple of minutes, and then we'll reduce it uh, to low heat, and it's just going to simmer. Already, I uh, wish you junkies could smell what I'm smelling. Such a beautiful shade, and the smells are equally magnificent as well. This has been boiling for a little bit. So we're going to turn the heat down. Make sure the cover is like this, allowing steam, aka water, to escape, which will result in the uh, stew uh, thickening up and becoming more concentrated. So there we go. Lower the heat. and we'll set it and forget it.
I'll check in in a couple of hours to show you what it looks like, but like I said earlier, let thermodynamics do all the work for you. Simmer, simmer now. There we go. When you're using electric, I mean, gas is the best to be cooking with, period, the end. And the reason why gas is the best is because you could actually control the heat much better. And obviously, the control of heat is very important uh, when cooking. Um, so, when you're using an electric stove like I am, uh, super, super, super important to know your stove. Every one stove is different, even if it's the same stove you still have different uh, electrical currents and resistance running through it. So no two stoves are built the same. So it is important, like I said, to make sure you know your stove, uh, which will result in you being able to control the heat the best you can. So we finally have our stew here at a simmer and uh, we're gonna forget it for a few hours. This is what our Sicilian turkey stew is looking like. After a bunch of hours, you can see how much it's reduced down, thickened up. Like I told you, that meat just fell off of those bones. Beautiful. I'm going to leave the bones still in there because that's flavor. So what I like to do towards the end of the cooking process is add my fresh herbs. So we're going to put some cilantro in. I love cilantro. I know many folks out there get very much creeped out from cilantro. Um, they have a sensitivity to it or they just don't like it for whatever reason. Kind of weird, um, but I'm weird, so I guess it's fine. But the point of adding the fresh herbs towards the end of the cooking process is exactly that. It's at the end uh, you don't want to cook the shit out of your herbs um, and squash all that flavor. kind of defeats the purpose. Um, so that's why, if you notice, I always add uh, the fresh herbs at the end. So we're going to continue to let this cook for, I don't know, a little bit more. Uh, then we're just going to take it off the heat and we should be ready to go. All right, junkies, there we have it, our Sicilian turkey bean stew. And just in case you forgot we used a turkey, there is its leg bone from the drumstick. So you could see we have all those lovely vegetables we chopped up and the black beans and the pinto beans. You also see how much it is reduced down and has thickened up. For our drink, we stopped by uh, the newly opened Bayboro Brewing, um, which is an outstanding operation, by the way. Absolutely love their beer garden. Uh, James owns the place. I believe he is a, a veteran, uh, a U.S. vet. So, I mean, that just compounds the awesomeness uh, of the brewery. Uh, in terms of product, they make an outstanding beer. Um, I tried uh, most of them, the brown ale. Uh, they make a, uh, a lager, a toasted amber. Um, obviously, you know, all the IPAs, which I typically stay away from. Um, and they had some other stuff. But so much fun there at the brewery. They always have top-tier food trucks as well. I opted for their... Kolsch, uh, which I believe comes in at 4.8%. Uh, as always, I'll post all the details in the uh, in the description. Um, as always, huge shout out, big love to both Robots Will Kill, What Up Chris, and Beer Canvas, who puts out these super cool uh, glasses and collaborations. Staten Island, what's up? Uh, uh, beer canvas is in Brooklyn, so between 
Chris and Robots Will Kill and Beer Canvas. You got the Brooklyn Staten Island connection. Uh, always get comments on my growler and the stickers. So I try to support uh, as many meaningful uh, organizations and businesses and proprietors as possible. So I'll just give that a twirl. The little uh, uh, spazzed out manatee on the bottom uh, is from Peach General Store. Uh, which is fantastic in the uh, historic uptown neighborhood. But there you have it. Thank you as always for tuning in. Uh, if you dig what you're watching, hit the like, share it with your friends, hit subscribe, ring the bell, uh, do all the above. Stay safe, keep well, and wash your junk. Until next time.